I think that there's um, probably three key, key drivers, pillars that are making the environment so active. And uh, two of them are on the demand side. One of them's on the, on the seller side, so on the sales side of it. On the demand side, um, for the last two years, but really for the last 10, but if we just focus on the last two years, the fundamental operating environment has been effectively uh, as good as ever. Um, almost every metric, uh, financial, uh, operational, is as good as it's ever been for most companies, maybe all. And uh, so you have a fundamental environment that just with the top three uh, title companies generated almost $8 billion of EBITDA last year. Wow. FAF five and a half. I'm um, sorry, FAF is two. FNF is five and a half. And then Stewart about 500. And uh, they're not capital intensive businesses. That's effectively cash flow. And that was 2021. Uh, very active, some of them more than others in title M&A. But then you have other players as well, like uh, Rocket with Amrock. They generated six and a half billion of EBITDA themselves last year. Realogy, who is in different parts of the, of the home transaction process, a billion. And that excludes some of the prop tech companies that have come public through SPAC and that have raised public equity. Last year in particular, Open Door raised a $800 million following offering. That was after going public with, a bill, I think it was over a billion of cash on their balance sheet. So on the demand side of the equation, you have a fundamental operating environment that it's really tough to be any better. Uh, a theme that you have also driving the demand side of it, which would be the second pillar, is um, just the convergence of everything. And I heard the panel before, I'm sure it's a, good, it's a recurring uh, topic throughout this conference, that, um, and especially with technology making things more actionable and, and legitimate, how can, what company can put on my phone uh, my ability to transact in a home and hit a couple buttons? And that's, that's what it is. So if it's Rocket pushing in with all of their different, uh, for real, all, all the companies that I just named. So that we have this theme that bigger is better, and the more you can provide with less hassle, um, the better off you are positioned to, to uh, prosper long term. So you have this fundamental environment that just has so much money and so much. And uh, by the way, they want to grow for title closings in 2022. So just go back in 2020, title closings were up about 50%. Heavy refi, but 50%. In 2021, total closings were flat, zero. That's a, a national number. And then in 2022, our, 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 our research projections, our title closings go down 25%. So if you were one of those companies generating that EBITDA and uh, you're not going to be able to hit that same number this year, then you've got the money, you've got to deploy it, you're looking for revenue, you're looking for EPS accretion. Now, those are all on the demand side of it, which are really... I'm not, I don't think I'm saying anything that everybody doesn't know. It's, it's um, very objective statements. And then on the sell side, you have, again, some of the things over the last two years, uh, an incredible an operating environment, but really it's been a good run for 10. But the last two, put a little cash in, in your pocket. And um, so it's a great time to sell from that perspective. There's increased operating risks in the business, and maybe that's because you feel the pressure of technology or maybe that's because of all of the sophisticated um, technological malware, uh, yep. wire fraud risks that now heighten the risk for the industry just to operate to keep the business. There's more risk today. Three is technology and just the anxious, um, um, overwhelming fear of what that might mean for a business in five years mm -hmm. or 10 years. Um, there's the age part of it. You know, every day we're all getting older and uh, maybe our kids don't wanna step in our shoes. So maybe the final point there on this, all those are seller motivations. That's, you know, those motivating factors are all really lined up. And then the final part is, hey, it's a great, it's a great time to sell from a terms perspective. So if you put all that together, then you get to Stewart last, the last two years at 20 M&A deals, 20. The number of deals they did on average, the prior eight was one. One in 20, not all the 20 were agencies, 12 were, but that's a lot of activity.